shout out to sponsor the Health Blaze. All the information is in the description. Use the promo code above. Good Fellow One Boxing at 18% off of all their natural products from deodorant, pomade, toothpaste, and much, much more. And they have additional discounts on their website as well. That's the healthblaze.com. Start December 20th. That promo code is good for 18% off. We go. What's going on? We back. Good Fellow Sports TV. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Uh, don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Help Blaze, TheHelpBlaze.com. Promo code goodfellow one boxing gets you 18% off. And then you get that 18% off in addition to any of the discounts, promos they are running. If you are into fitness, eating clean, organic foods, all natural stuff, they, you def, they definitely got the products that can assist that clean lifestyle with you know, natural deodorant, natural toothpaste, lotions, foot soaks, bath bombs, hair pomade, muscle relaxer rub. So the website is in the description as well as the um, promo code. So uh, I want to talk about this, man. Um, it's funny how 2000 kind of 18 ended and 19 began. Um, ended with, had, well, pretty much ended, kind of began with Kevin Hart, you know, um, basically overstepping his boundaries. Um, you know, in some people's opinion, they didn't want to see that blackface host Academy Awards. It's kind of, you know, find itself in his, in, in the first real turmoil uh, of kind of being like, he's finally found out that he has a boundary being a black um, entertainer. Even though he's in white movies, black movies, he got a movie with Brian Cranston coming up. He got all these different movies, he that popular, but he's finally finding out he's just another black guy in Hollywood. He's found his boundary. He's found out he has limitations like other black entertainers, like Bill Cosby, they said was going to buy, you know, a NBC he found out he had a limitation. We all have, all black actors have a limitation in Hollywood because you can't get too big. And um, for the most part, Kevin Hart thought he was this likable dude. He had went through the extortion thing about somebody trying to extort him from cheating on his wife. His wife stayed with him, stayed strong, didn't bend, didn't break in a relationship. You got to love it. She didn't really uh, dip out on him at the first sign of trouble, even though he allegedly had cheated on her during, while she was pregnant. She stayed strong. She understood, and Kev got a second chance at that. So he, he dodged that little BS that a lot of different uh, entertainers and males from different ethnic groups deal with, um, you know, all the time. And then you had this thing that keeps popping up about his homophobic comments he made jokingly on Twitter years and years ago. Come back up. He said, "I'm not apologizing no more." After apologizing several times for it, he goes on Ellen DeGeneres. Apologize today. We did the the uh, the video about Good Morning America. You see the video pop up on the screen. You can click on the watch if you missed it at the end of the video. That that came about. So, you know, he's finding out that what Cat Williams was saying is true. Now everybody, he saw Cat Williams. You had the shot. You blew it. You had the shot. You blew it. But he they wouldn't understand what Cat Williams was saying. All right. Especially about Tiffany Haddash. He just spoke facts like she don't have a joke that, you know, she's known for or stand up that she's known for. And he said, I know 20 other actresses that were better than her and were more accomplished than her. But she was just picked by the white man to go in and, and do that. She had a white husband and then all of a sudden she divorced the white husband because basically she did some of the um, the rituals to get in Hollywood. And she basically passed the I she passed the ritual test. And so they're probably Kevin Kevin Hart. You hear these ritual tests, these rituals they go through. Um, if you've never seen an interview by Ali Vegas, I'll try to put it in the, in the description. I'll put it on the source link, article link, or source link probably. Um, check that interview out. I find it. I put it in the source link. You can watch it. Um, check that interview out. It's a real interesting interview about some of the rituals that people in the music industry go through. You best believe in Hollywood. They make a lot of the other entertainers go through it, especially the black entertainers and other minority entertainers go through it to hang something over their head. And Kevin Hart is now paying that piper. You know what I'm saying? Like Kat Williams said, everybody said Charlamagne the guy, they first, this is a code word, they first to say, you hating. When you tell the truth in this generation, you're a hater. They don't like the truth. They don't want to expose the truth. They don't want to expose the real. People in this generation like for you to be fake, be artificial, superficial definitely wants you to be superficial they don't want you to dig too deep they don't want you to be real once you too, once you real you a hater once you too real you a super duper hater and what cat williams was saying on that that radio show in atlanta was facts he was all factual about kevin hart and tiffany Haddash. you know kevin hart ain't the funniest in kevin hart and cat williams opinion 
He ain't lying. He's not the funniest. But you know what? He was a good old boy that he chose to be the chosen one. Whatever he done to do what he got to do, it's a thousand other comedians funnier than Kevin Hart. Okay? But Kevin Hart has a good mind. You know, he has a good personality. He messes well with other ethnic groups. So he did what he had to do to get that position. And when he was telling Cat Williams, you a hater, you old, you had your shot, you blew it, he didn't understand where Cat was coming from. Cat was telling him, like, nigga, I was like you. You know, I tried to fake and fit in and, and do this and that. And same thing for Richard Pryor. You know what I'm saying? Richard Pryor was curving his at his 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 real side in the beginning of his comedian career, performing for white people, lying about, you know, you know, his character, not telling, you know, what he'd done in his childhood at Pierre, Illinois, I think it was. He couldn't expose that back then because that wasn't popular. And he had to find a place where he actually can can really talk and do comedy about himself. And he was real hardcore then, you know. But that's where Cat Williams was at. Cat Williams got tired of playing the game. He got tired of following the script. Cat Williams, well, he already done what Kevin Hart has done. He already been through what Kevin Hart has been. When people say, well, Cat going crazy and Cat wrestling with a 12-year-old and Man, cat and people say, "Well, cat just crazy. Cat on drugs." And no, nah, you know, cat is telling you the truth. When you don't do what they you they, when you don't do what they want you to do in Hollywood, then they make you look crazy. They go out there to assassinate your character until you fall back in line. Same thing with Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle didn't want to do the Dave Chappelle show no more. Why didn't Dave Chappelle just go home, enjoy his riches, go do another movie, go find another show, or go get a regular nine to five, or go open up a, a, a chain of Home Depots or a chain of of McDonald's or Burger King and live his best life. Why did Dave Chappelle go to Hollywood? Dave Chappelle, I mean, went to Africa. Dave Chappelle went to Africa because he knew what they was going to try to do to him. They was going to try to expose him, try to make him look crazy. So Dave was like, I'm going to go to Africa for a minute. I'm going to hit woo 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 up and tell him, like, here, man, I do this, do that. You know, I'm not going to overstep my boundary. I'm not going to say nothing. So he had to be accepted to come back into Hollywood. You know? Cat Williams was like, man, I ain't going nowhere. They ain't going to do shit to me. Ain't no way it can make me woo woo. Same thing Kevin Hart going through. Not, not this dude is on, 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 on. I'm not apologizing no more. Eh. You know, and it went, you know, now I went from him doing Good Morning America today, like we talked about, and like, I'm not apologizing no more. I apologize. I apologize. You know, I said what I want to say, and he tried to make it, he tried to be funny, but guess what? You know, he's trying to be serious, be fun, but it's not funny no more. Everybody don't love you no more. Everybody not laughing. Nobody's still laughing no more. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the gig's up. You're exposed. You ain't exposed for, for nothing that you did wrong, but in their minds, you're exposed for being homophobic. Okay? They had to find something to get you on. Mr. Goody Two Shoes. Mr. That's in every movie. Mr. That's the new Eddie Murphy. Uh, uh, and now he's doing child movies, and now he's doing you know comedy scene in every other movie. Now they got something on you. Now you can't deal with the heat. And Cat Williams warned you. They had to catch you out at one time and then with Tiffany Hadash. He said it. He said, Broad ain't that funny. I know 20 other comedians that I took on the road that's way more funny, way more deserving. But she basically, you know, she had to go through the rituals. I'm not going to say exactly what he said word for word. But he said she had to go through the rituals to get what she got. You know, and people say, well, Hadash ain't that funny and, and this and that. Oh, you hating, you hating. You know, that's what you always get with black people. You know, that's your honest opinion. It's not hating. If you really don't think she that funny, she not that funny. And I feel the same way. Like, she ain't extremely funny. She not more more funny than, you know, some of the other lady comedians I've seen. You know what I'm saying? Like, some more, uh, whatever her name is. She was super funny. I don't see her anymore. You know what I'm saying? Um, even, um, you know, even uh, Monique was pretty funny. You know what I'm saying? You know, back in her day, hey, day before she crossed over and just tried acting crazy, so it's a lot of great female comedians out there, and she ain't the funniest one, and like Kevin Hart said, she was already married to a white guy, divorced him, and then basically got bust down by a few dudes in Hollywood, and that's how she got her spot, and I believe him, you know, everybody acting like cat crazy, or cat retarded, cat telling you the truth what's going on, you know what I'm saying, like he said about the girl strip script, he said that script, anybody could have been funny doing that script, he said you, the color the girl in the car, you could have read that script and was funny, that script, that script was wrote back in 2004, they, they look at him like he's crazy. Like, yeah. He was right. They are funded and backed by Hollywood, by white Hollywood. Cat Williams told no lie. Well, everybody said, oh, he hating, he hating. 
Dude, hating is going out your way to tell lies. Okay? Hating is going out your way to tell lies. And and this dude didn't go out his way and tell no lie. This dude told the absolute truth about why these why they, why those two so popular. You know? He went out his way to keep it real. He told people, and people said, oh, cat just hating and stuff of that nature and that. Now you see it. Now she bombed out with stand-up comedian. You don't see anybody showing clips of Tiffany Hadesh doing stand-up comedy. You will see Monique, uh, Miss Underwood. You will see uh, uh, some more. Uh, you will see, you know, other lady comedians. You see com lady comedians from the 90s. Before you see a Tiffany Hadesh clip over and over again. You see the same comedians, few queens of comedy, we call queens of comedy, doing clips over and over again. You know? You won't see a Symphony Hadash clip. You know, and they just the, got the they got the they got the protection for they got the complexion for the protection this in this in this time, but the thing about their protection for they uh for their complexion is that it's a time limit on it. Once they don't comply, once they want to do their own thing, they don't control their own career. That's what Matt Cat Williams telling you. You know, they're manufactured. They're not self-made. They're manufactured. And now they're getting exposed for that. Now, people want to choose to believe it or not. They want to still say Cat Williams is lying. The proof's in the pudding. The proof's in the pudding. Just like he told Cat, you had your shot. You blew it. You had your shot. You blew it. Now, I want you to get that same energy when your when your when your landslide keep going down, when you on the down slope, and when they butt break you in, when they break you down for every little thing you saying, when you thought you was the most highest, you thought you was different from everybody else, you thought you was on the elite level of black comedy, you thought you was on the comedy level of crossing over, you can kick it with the whites, you can kick it with the blacks, you can you can just cap both communities, and they just shows you you can't. Kevin Hart, you're not upper echelon. Proves again, Cat Williams right. Tiffany did that. You're not funny. The script was anybody could have been funny with that script. He proved it. He didn't have to prove it. They proved it themselves. And it happens to a lot of black entertainers. Hollywood will chew you up and spit you out as a black entertainer. They will chew you up and spit you out. You know? And, and Cat told him, man. Cat told him I had to go back and look at that. Uh, I had to go back and look at that interview again, and I looked. I said, "Man, that dude said everything right. Everything he said was factual, you know." But then again, people gonna still say you hate, and that's the thing about this generation. When you tell them the truth, you a hater. Real talk. That's what it means. You a hater. But appreciate everybody for checking in, man. Um, Goodfellas Sports TV. Don't forget you can find us on Facebook, Twitter. Also got a Facebook group. Um, also you can reach out to me in the email. You can DM me on social media questions, business inquiries, sponsorships. Um, uh, you want to make a donation? That links in the description as well. I definitely appreciate everybody for blessing me with your viewership and your eyes, your ears today. Don't forget to check out the Hellblaze, the Hellblaze.com promo code Goodfellas One Boxing. Um, and you won't be upset, man. Check out some of that great natural products, lotion, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, and much, much more. And, um, yeah, let me know how y'all feel about this, man, um, about this situation. If you want more conversation about relationship advice, deep intellectual talk, check my Patreon, Food for Thought, Tear Out. You definitely won't be mad. And check out our hood series where we cover a lot of different epidemics that go on in the hood, drug dealing and, you know, hitmen and all that type of stuff. Check it out, the Patreon. Most definitely appreciate everybody checking in. Stay on the lookout for us. Share the